Another day, another story. Recent data from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention show that COVID-19 infections are growing across the majority of the United States. According to the CDC, infections are growing or likely growing in 39 states and territories, including Tennessee. No states or territories showed signs of declining or likely declining COVID rates. Welcome to Tarbo Eminent Channel. Infections were stable or uncertain in 10 states and territories, the CDC stated. The CDC's COVID-19 data tracker shows the projections of the COVID-19 variants. Since May, the prevalence of JN.1 has steadily declined while cases of KP.3 and KP.2 have increased. For a two-week period, beginning on June 22, 2024 and ending on July 6, 2024, the leading variant in the country is KP.3, accounting for 31.3% of infections. Local data reflects that of the national level. In Region 4, which includes Tennessee, Alabama, Florida, Georgia, Kentucky, Mississippi, North Carolina, and South Carolina, the KP.3 variant led the way with 34.3% of infections. According to the Tennessee Health Department, 53 new COVID-19 cases were reported on June 27, 2024. According to CDC spokesperson, Rosa Norman, KP.3 evolved from JM.1, which was the major viral lineage circulating since December 2023. Estimates predict that KP.3 is the dominant SARS-CoV-2 variant making up 31.2 to 43% of viruses nationally, Norman told USA Today in a statement. KP.3 is projected to continue increasing as proportions of the variants that cause COVID-19. What is the KP.3 variant? According to the CDC, KP.3, as well as KP.2, are descendants of the JN.1 variant. KP. 3 is part of a group of SARS-CoV-2 variants sometimes called FLIRT variants, named after the technical names for their mutations. Other FLIRT variants have also been identified as circulating in the US but have not yet become as widespread as KP.3 or KP.2, said the CDC. What are the symptoms of the KP.3 variant? As previously reported by USA Today, the CDC has not said if KP.3 has its own specific symptoms. Norman said the symptoms associated with KP.3 are similar to those from JN.1. According to the CDC, symptoms of COVID-19 may appear 2 to 14 days after being exposed to the virus. The KP.3 variant of COVID-19, part of the flirt family of variants, is currently spreading in Tennessee and across the United States. This variant has become dominant, accounting for a significant portion of new cases. Symptoms of KP.3 are similar to previous strains and include a runny nose, sore throat, fever, fatigue, body aches, and sometimes gastrointestinal issues. While the risk of severe illness is lower for most, individuals with underlying health conditions, pregnant women, and infants are at higher risk. Vaccination remains the best protection against severe outcomes. The KP.3 variant has shown a marked increase in transmission in Tennessee and beyond. This variant, like its predecessors, spreads quickly and leads to a spike in COVID-19 cases. Common symptoms include runny nose, sore throat, fever, fatigue, and body aches, with some experiencing gastrointestinal issues. High-risk groups, such as individuals with chronic conditions, pregnant women, and infants, remain particularly vulnerable. Health experts emphasize the importance of vaccination to mitigate severe illness and hospitalization. The KP.3 variant has raised concerns due to its rapid spread in Tennessee and other regions. This variant's symptoms are akin to those of previous strains, such as runny nose, sore throat, fever, fatigue, body aches, and gastrointestinal issues. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention CDC, stresses the importance of vaccination as the primary defense against severe outcomes. Vaccines not only reduce the risk of severe illness but also help prevent the long-term effects of COVID-19, known as long COVID. 
The KP.3 variant is now the dominant strain of COVID-19 in Tennessee and several other regions. This variant has caused an increase in cases due to its high transmissibility. Common symptoms include runny nose, sore throat, fever, fatigue, body aches, and gastrointestinal issues. Individuals with chronic conditions, pregnant women, and infants are particularly at risk. Health experts emphasize the importance of vaccination to prevent severe illness and long-term complications like long COVID. The KP.3 COVID-19 variant is continuing to lead as the dominant variant, the newest Centers for Disease Control and Prevention CDC, data shows. For a two-week period starting on June 23 and ending on July 6, the CDC's now-cast data tracker showed the projections of the COVID-19 variants. The KP.3 variant accounted for 36.9% of positive infections followed by KP.2 at 24.4%, Estimates predict that KP.3 is the dominant SARS-CoV-2 variant making up 31.2 to 43% of viruses nationally. KP.3 is projected to continue increasing as proportions of the variants that cause COVID-19, CDC spokesperson, Rosa Norman, told USA Today in a statement. KP.3 evolved from JN.1, which was the major viral lineage circulating since December 2023. The data also shows that the new variant Pound.1 has fallen back 3% by accounting for 14.5% of cases but was previously at 17.5% of infections. JN.1, the previous ring leader since 2023, only had 1.0% of positive cases which is a 0.6% decrease from the previous two-week period. On July 2, the CDC said that the COVID-19 infections are growing in 39 states, stable or uncertain in 10 states and declining in zero. Symptoms of COVID-19 The CDC has not said if KP.3 has its own specific symptoms. Norman said the symptoms associated with KP.3 are similar to those from JN.1. However, the government agency outlines the basic symptoms of COVID-19 on its website. As people prepare to travel or continue their summer vacations, COVID-19 is still widespread. The KP.3 COVID-19 variant is the dominant strain of the virus, according to the Federal Centers for Disease Control and Prevention's data. The CDC no longer regularly tracks and releases the number of new COVID-19 infections after the Biden administration lit the COVID-19 national emergency and public health emergency expire in May 2023. States are no longer required to report new cases. In addition, home tests, which are mostly not reported to authorities, have made tallies of new infections a less reliable metric. Instead, the CDC uses data from the National Center for Health Statistics, National Vital Statistics Surveillance and National Respiratory and Enteric Virus Surveillance System. The mutations in KP.3, particularly in the spike protein, enhance its ability to infect cells and evade the immune system, even among those people who have been vaccinated or previously infected. According to USA Today, during a two-week period starting June 23 and ending July 6, the CDC's now-cast data tracker showed that the KP.3 variant accounted for 36.9% of positive infections followed by KP.2 at 24.4%. Protection from KP.3 and other variants The CDC recommends the 2023-24 updated COVID-19 vaccines, Pfizer-BioNTech, Moderna, or Novavax, to protect against serious illness from COVID-19. Children aged 6 months to 4 years may need multiple doses of COVID-19 vaccines to be up to date, including at least one dose of updated COVID-19 vaccine. People who are moderately or severely immunocompromised may get additional doses of the updated COVID-19 vaccine. People aged 65 years and older who received one dose of any updated 2023-24 COVID-19 vaccine, Pfizer-BioNTech, Moderna or Novavax, should receive one additional dose of an updated COVID-19 vaccine at least four months after the previous updated dose. Thanks for watching. Request you to subscribe the channel.